Okay, today we will start about uh, the second lecture in the series on marine hydrodynamics. And uh, yesterday we have given a brief uh, introduction about marine hydrodynamics, its importance, and various areas which will be required afterwards as a continuation of this course. With this background, now let us uh, go to a further uh, details about the various laws of nature. Basically, we will concentrate today on the equation of continuity whose physical significance is law of conservation of mass. And in while before going to the law of conservation of mass, I will uh, again review what we have done yesterday about the material derivative. Again, <coughs> we have done it in the context of uh, uh, a vector, particularly in the context of velocity and acceleration. Today, let us uh, look at this in the context of a scalar function. Suppose I have, uh, when I look at a scalar function, I will consider that uh, as if uh, we are uh, considering in the fluid some of the functions like uh, the density, fluid density. or the pressure, which are again a function of uh, x, y, z and t, because they all depend on the space as well as the time. Suppose I take a point here p and the function that is f, which is a function of x, y, z at time t and the same after time del t what will happen to this? This will be f of x plus del x, y plus del y because it is changing in time and space z plus del, del z and del t. So, if from here to here it moves, then what will happen? My del f, how much is the changes observed that is del f becomes f of x plus del x, y plus del y, z plus del z and t initially it was at time t minus f of x, y, z and t. If you do this and what we get, we will get this as just assuming this uh, time is uh, small, so the changes in del x, del y, del z are all small, then this gives us del f by del x into d, d x plus del f by del y d y plus del f by del z into d z plus del f by del t into d t. So, if that is the case, what will happen? Then what will happen? Limit, if you look at this in the sense that limit del t tends to 0, what will happen to del f by del t? And this will give you del f by del x into d x by d t plus del f by del y d y by d t plus del f by del z into d z by d t plus del f by del t and which is nothing but this is equal to u del f by del x plus g del f by del y plus w del f by del z plus del f by del t, which is again same as is equal to q bar to grad of f plus
dollar by dollar t which we can write q bar dot grad plus dollar by dollar t into f. So, this is what we had got in on this left side also it will happen that this will be give us that this is same as d f by d t. Now, this as I have last time we have talked about that this is called the total derivative. So, this is the local derivative, this is the convective derivative. Then now in practice in reality this situation occur like when they, there is a change in the like uh, in ocean when we have a change in the density from one place to another because you can uh, look at examples like when there is a est in estuary there is a flow of water the density changes with space and time. Another example I will give you what about stratification the ocean water is stratified and in this stratified fluid the basically one of the factor which is very changes rapidly that is the density and that density of basically salinity and the salinity changes with is both in space and time because we at one point we may see the salinity is something, but if you go to another point you take a test and then you will see the salinity of the water is changing. Similar way you can also see that the pressure. Another example I will say when there is a oil spill in the ocean there are we come across on the top of the fresh water or the saline water there is a layer of fluid which is a so, that fluid flow from one place to another in the process with a change in time the density also changes fluid density because this is in it becomes a non homogeneous fluid unlike a homogeneous one. So, due to change in pressure uh, change in space and time there can be a change in the density characteristics of the fluid and that is what and this is a scalar function. So, it is not and always it is not necessarily true that only we can talk about d by dt to a total derivative in case of a vector function we can also talk about the material derivative in case of a scalar function provided they have the similar characteristics and property of the fluid. Now, this uh, background again yesterday I had talked about that uh, how to convert using the Gauss divergence theorem I have told that we can always change a surface integral to line integral and uh, this equation will help us this theorem Gauss divergence theorem will help us in deriving the equation of continuity and when it comes to laws of uh, equation of continuity I will call it as physically it is means equation of continuity In other words, we call it its physical significance is law of conservation of mass. Law of conservation of mass. So, he says the law of conservation of mass says that fluid mass can neither it be created, mass can neither be created. nor be destroyed. It cannot be created nor be destroyed particularly within a specific volume that means, the amount of fluid that will enter to a particular region it will be the same amount of fluid has to will go out from the region. Now, so let us derive this mathematically what does it says? Let us consider a to do that let us consider any fluid surface and let me consider small this is the surface in the fluid a closed surface and let us say the volume of uh, the in this region the amount of fluid volume of the fluid is tau and let us consider any elementary surface on this ds and on this elementary surface let me say that the uh, velocity of the fluid particle is q be the velocity of the particle 
Now let me say that n is the outward drawn normal on this surface. Then in that case, then and let me say rho is the density of the fluid. density of the fluid. So, if rho is the density, then then we have already had defined n hat q bar d s is the elementary mass. Then what will happen mass of fluid that will what will happen to the mass of fluid that will enter per unit time through this cross section through the surface element through d s. The amount of fluid that will enter through the surface element d s uh, will be minus rho q bar into dot n hat d s the outer direction it will enter through the fluid and then already I have mentioned that uh, here rho is the density q is the velocity then what will happen to the total mass of the fluid so we have the total volume is s and then the total mass of fluid that will enter through this will be minus s rho q bar n hat d s that gives the total mass of fluid that will enter to the fluid. Now, if you look at as I mentioned let us say that the elementary volume of the fluid elementary volume within the surface element s element D s if it is uh, d tau then what will happen to the total mass of fluid and we have the total mass of fluid because our total volume is tau this will give us integral over tau rho d tau. If the total mass is uh, rho d tau, then what is the rate of change of mass? Per unit time, the rate of change of mass per unit time will be equal to del by del t integral of tau rho d tau that is nothing but integral over tau because the, it is a continuous fluid media you can always call it del rho by del t d tau. Now from conservation of mass hence as we have said that mass can be neither from continuity equation which uh, that is the conservation of mass which says that the mass can be neither created nor be destroyed. So, we can have the amount of fluid that is del rho by del t d tau it will be same as minus integral over s rho q r dot n hat d s and uh, we will again apply to this the Stokes divergence theorem or the first divergence theorems and that will give us minus tau divergent of rho q r d tau. So, now if I add this to which implies 
इंटीग्रल ओवर टाओ डेल रो बाय डेल टी प्लस डाइवर्जेंट ऑफ रो क्यू बार डेटा जीरो व्हिच अगेन कैन बी रीडिटन एस सिंस टाओ इज एलिमेंटरी टाओ इज आर्बिट्ररी tau is an arbitrary volume we can always say d tau is tau which gives once we said d tau is a tau so this is this elementary volume is same as this which else that means this part has to be zero because del rho by del t plus divergent of rho q r is zero and this is what is called the equation of continuity i'll give you a simplification of this this uh, further can be written as this equation further can be written as integral over tau del rho by del t plus del by del x I just expand it in cartesian coordinate sorry okay del by del x rho q bar plus del by del y rho q bar plus del by del z you know which is same as del rho by del t you can al also write q bar You can al always write q bar dot del rho plus rho into divergent of q bar is zero, which is same as you can write as d rho by d t plus rho into divergent of q bar is zero. And uh, this now in Cartesian coordinate again we will write it in Cartesian coordinate we can say that If we, because you have q bar is equal to u v w, then we can always say that the three components x component will be rather we will put it in this way. I will come to this a little later, better. So, now this one we call this as the continuity equation. If this is the continuity equation, then what will happen if rho is d rho, rho if the fluid is comp incompressible. If the fluid is incompressible, then we have d rho by dt equal to 0. Once d rho by dt is 0, then we have divergent of 
q r that is 0. So, that this is what the equation of continuity for continuity for incompressible fluid. So, this becomes the equation of continuity for incompressible fluid. Now, if you look at this another point of view, suppose there can be another way of looking at if del by del t, del rho by del t is 0, means the fluid changes in the, the density is independent of time, then we can have divergent of, because we have already seen divergent of rho q bar is equal to 0, but only when, but this does not mean, this does not mean, this is to discharge, it is independent of the time, but it does not mean that the fluid is incompressible. So, for incompressible fluid, because rho is a function of x, y, z and t, for incompressible fluid it has to have d rho by dt is 0, it is not necessarily that d rho by dt is 0. So, for a compressible fluid we have once for an incompressible fluid we have uh, divergent q is 0 whereas for the compressible fluid we have d rho by dt plus rho into divergent q is 0. Now, so in Cartesian coordinate we can write at for the incompressible fluid in Cartesian coordinate system we always write it del u by del x plus del b by del y plus del w by del z equal to 0 and this is the equation of continuity for an incompressible fluid. So, in this case because this is very important and we will be using this in, because in a hydrodynamics our major emphasis will be on incompressible fluid. So, most of the time when in incompressible fluid we will always in the Cartesian coordinate we will always refer to this equation as the equation of continuity and in fact it helps us in solving many problems in marine hydrodynamics. Then now I will go with an example. Suppose I have been given that suppose for a particular fluid, suppose the velocity vector is given by q bar is equal to u v w and which are given by whereas u is equal to a x plus b y, v is equal to c x plus d y and my w is equal to 0. So, what should be the criteria on a and a b c d? So, that this will represent a there is a possible fluid motion. Particularly in this case, this is independent of rho. So, you can always say that if divergent q will be 0, then from this equation from because we have been u, so we have del u by del x plus del v by del y plus del w by del z equal to 0 gives us, it gives us del u by del x that will give you a and del p by del y that will give you d and w is 0. So, a plus d is 0 which implies a is equal to minus d and this is the criteria for the velocity vector given by this to ensure that there is a fluid motion is possible. So, a has to be minus d in this case for a possible fluid motion. Now, I will go to another example. Suppose I will say, suppose u is equal to 2 c x y and my v is equal to c into a square plus x square minus y square and my w is 0. If this is the case, here also u v w are independent, this is my example 2. So, in this case also u v w r they are all independent of rho. So, it can be easily seen that d rho by d t is 0. Then we have 
we have del u by del x is equal to 2 c y, we have del u by del y minus 2 c y and you have del w by del z because w is 0, this is 0 which implies but del u by del x plus del v by del y plus del w by del z is equal to 2 c y minus 2 c y that is 0. So, since this is 0, so we can always say that the velocity field represented by u is equal to 2 c x y v is equal to t c uh, c into s square plus x square minus y square and w is equal to 0 represents the flow of an incompressible fluid. Now, with this example, I will give some of the examples for you to work it out at room in your home that I will just give it a homework. Suppose my q bar is given by k square x j hat minus y i hat divided by x square plus y square where k is a constant. Here it is independent of z component. So, the velocity is so w is since it is not mentioned about z component. So, we can always say w is equal to 0 in this case. So, the motion of so the existence of for this velocity vector q. So, the existence of a fluid motion. So, that means again we will show that del u by del x plus del v by del y plus del w by del z is 0. Another example I will say example 3, I will just this give you as a homework and you can try this. Suppose u is equal to 2 x y z by x square plus y square square and v is equal to x square minus y square into z divided by x square plus y square square and w is equal to y by x square plus y square. So, the velocity vector, the vector fluid if q bar is q given by this u by w by this then also we can show that so whether possible whether so whether there is a the velocity vector given by this velocity vector given above represents a possible fluid motion. Flow of because uh, possible fluid flow. Represents a possible fluid flow. So it can be easily checked it because again you are using because you have to again check that uh, whether the divergent of q is 0. That means del u by del x plus del v by del y plus del w by del z whether it is 0. Thus, we are now clear about the equation of continuity. It provides certain knowledge about whether there will be a possible motion or not. If uh, once we are sure, then I will say because this is all in Cartesian coordinate, what happen and particularly when there is we do not we have not talked about the rotationality of the fluid particles. Now, in this context, I will talk about vorticity factor. Vorticity vector. If q bar is the velocity vector of a fluid particle, then what will happen? If q is the velocity vector of a fluid particle, then what will happen? Curl of q bar. Curl of q bar will be del cross q bar and that also we can write it as i j k then we have del by del x, del by del y, del by del z that is u v w and this I call it as omega bar and I call this vector as the vertice vector. This represents this vertice vector omega bar represents the 
velocity of a represents the angular velocity of the fluid particle. of the fluid particle. It is a kinematic property of the flow and at each point it gives the angular velocity of the fluid particle. Now, once omega bar is this, this is a vector and it is the angular velocity of the fluid particle it provides. Then with this we can go to what is vertex free motion rather we will call it vertex free motion. In case of a vertex free motion that means, if omega bar is equal to 0 that means, fluid particle will not rotate and we call this as so, if omega bar is 0 then we call this a vertex free motion sometimes we call this as a irrotational motion same we call it as irrotational motion. So, in case of vertex free motion, if you component wise you will separate them because it has three components for i, j, and k, basically the x, y, z component. So, we will get del y, del w by del y minus del v by del z equal to 0, then we have del w by del x minus del 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 u by del z is equal to 0 and another is uh, that is your del u by del y minus del v by okay, del u by del y minus del v by del x 0. So, these are component wise if these three quantities are 0 for a particular velocity vector q bar, where q bar is the velocity vector, omega bar is the angular velocity or what we call the vorticity vector, then if omega bar is 0, then these three quantities are 0 and we see the flow as irrotational. Flow is irrotational or we sometimes call it that yeah, vertex free motion. Now, in this case of irrotational flow, Once we have the rotational flow, we have seen what will happen because we have already seen for a velocity vector q bar, if del u by del x is del u by del y rather is del v by del x and del v by del v del v by del that means, we have del w by del y equal to del v by del z and then we have del w by del x minus del w by del u by del z this is 0. So, can you find a vector, can you find a scalar rather phi which is a function of x, y, z and t such that if I say phi is a scalar function such that q is equal to q bar is equal to gradient of phi. If I can find a function such that q is equal to grad phi, then what will happen? My u bar will be phi x, v will be phi y and then my w will be phi z. So, I can if I get u v w as phi x phi y and phi z and q bar is grad phi then we can see that it will easily satisfy the three conditions because from if you substitute for u v w from here in this expression then it, it, we can easily say that they satisfy these equations sorry this is not 0 ok this is same as this. So, if this is this then what will happen? That means, since we can find a phi where q is equal to grad phi and it satisfies this equation, then we can say 
that this phi we call the velocity potential. So, what we have observed phi is the phi is the velocity potential. Now, what we have observed when the flow is rotational, that means when the flow is rotational, we can always find we can find a phi such that q is grad phi and again let us see that what will happen to divergent of q. We have divergent q is 0 that is we have del u by del x plus del v by del y plus del w by del z that is equal to 0. And if you put u is equal to phi x, v is equal to phi y and w is equal to phi z, then you will get del square phi by del x square plus del square phi by del y square plus del square phi by del z square is 0. So, what we have seen here that when the flow is rotational, when the flow is rotational, there exists a velocity potential phi such that q is equal to grad phi and that phi satisfy the Laplace equation. And if I say phi is equal to constant, then for each constant I will get a surface like a curve and I will call this as equipotentials lines. I will get a line for each constant, I will call them as equipotential lines. So, phi is equal to constant for each phi I will get and we will call this as equipotential lines. And the corresponding flow, sometimes we call this flow as potential flow. So, that means when the fluid is incompressible, when the fluid is incompressible as well as the motion is rotational, then we will have a potential, uh, will the flow we call it that a potential flow and in such a situation, we will have that the potential for a potential flow there exists a velocity potential phi which satisfies the Laplace equation. This is what, so this is a is a kind of a rotational flow, this is the same as the continuity equation. Now, with this and always you can see that whether the flow is a, this is for a three dimensional flow, this potential function exists, phi will exist. Now, what is the physical meaning of this phi? If I look at the physical meaning of phi, because if I look at this like uh, if I consider the integral c my q dot d bar dr bar, what does this gives me? This gives me integral over c u d x plus v d y plus w d z and this gives me integral over c. If I say the flow is rotational for a rotational flow this will be del phi by del x plus del phi by del y plus sorry d x plus del phi by del y d y plus del phi by del z d z and this is nothing but d phi integral over c that is nothing but d phi and this if I say when c is equal to a b then integral of c q bar dot dr bar integral over a b a to b basically that is d phi that gives me phi a phi b minus phi a and what does this gives? I know what q bar dot dr bar represents. This is a measure of the fluid velocity in the direction of the contour at each point. So, the velocity potential phi, velocity potential phi and here we see that this is, these are the two end points, 
B and A. So, it is independent of the path because it is just phi B minus phi A. It does, does not depend on the path. Hence, the velocity potential it is related with the product of the velocity vector and the length along the path between the two distinct point A and B. This is what I understand. So, can I say that uh, we will come to this that the necessary condition now for the velocity potential phi to exist is that the flow has to be rotational. Unless flow is irrotational, only for irrotational flow we can have del square phi is 0 and basically the velocity potential phi exists in this case. And this, this when the flow is rotational, we always call this it is a vertex free motion. Uh, LA. So, whether the flow is a two dimensional or three dimensional, we will always have the velocity potential. Means, suppose I say that if I say u is equal to phi x, v is equal to phi y and w is equal to 0, and I can always say that this is a two dimensional flow. And in that case, also I have a velocity potential, in that case the corresponding equation, continuity equation will give you del square phi by del x square plus del square phi by del y square is equal to 0, that is for a two dimensional flow, two dimensional flow. Now, in this uh, we have understood by now what is a velocity potential, what is a vortex free motion, what is a rotational motion. Now, I will go to what is a vortex line. Also, we have come across what is vortex lines. Suppose I have a flow and if omega bar is the vorticity vector. And uh, let, so if omega bar is the vorticity vector, suppose this is omega bar in the vorticity vector. And then I draw a tangent at this flow that is dr bar. What will happen if omega bar is parallel to dr bar. That means, the vorticity vector is in the direction of the tangent. If omega bar is parallel to dr bar, it is same as telling omega bar cross dr bar is 0. This is the cross product where dr, that dr is can be given by x i cap or d x i cap or d y j cap plus d z k cap and already we know omega has the component omega bar has the component omega x omega y and omega z. If that is the case then what will happen omega bar d r bar if that is 0 we can also find easily from this that means i j k you have omega x omega y, omega z, these are the components of the vorticity vector in the direction of x, y, z direction, d x, d y, d z are the component of the uh, d r. So, if this is equal to 0, which implies you can be easily seen that d x by omega x, d y by omega y is equal to d z by omega z. So, this is this will give us the equation of the vortex line. This gives us the equation of the vortex lines. So, when the that means again when it comes that when the flow is rotational, these vortex lines will not exist because for so, I can conclude that 
because omega bar will be 0 in case of irrotational flow because vertex head vector will be not there it will be 0. So, in that case we will not have any vertex lines. Now, we have already talked about then what will happen to vertex line suppose what is about a vertex tube in the fluid let us take up any closed curve gamma and at each point we draw vertex lines at each point we will draw a line and this since this path is a, this is a closed curve in the fluid and at each point we are. So, the tube that will be obtained will obtain this is called a vertex tube. Then from here I will make one conclusion from here. Suppose I have any closed surface S, what will happen to n hat dot omega bar d s? If I apply the Gauss divergence theorem, this will give me integral over tau del dot omega d tau and this can be this can be if you substitute it for omega because omega bar is the vertex d vector and then del dot omega bar that will give us a 0 so this will give us 0 once this is 0 because this is from from this to this we get by gauss divergence theorem and this part it can be easily seen that if you say that del dot omega bar that will give you del by del x omega x plus del by del y omega y plus del by del z omega z and that will be because this will be u equal to 0 it can be easily checked by using the components of this. So, that shows us that this is 0. So, what does this gives us? That means, if I take two surfaces, two curves, two closed surfaces and then I just look at the calculate the n hat dot omega bar d s at this point and take it at another surface calculate the n hat dot omega bar d s then both are same because this is 0. So, this both can be same which means that the total strength because so that will show us the total strength of vertex tubes emerging from S 1 the same of emerging out of S 1 will be the same as the strength of the vertex emerging out of S 2 and that is uh, which suggests that we suggest that the vertex tubes vertex align or vertex tube which implies vertex align cannot cannot originate from cannot originate or terminate at any at internal points in the fluid they can only form closed curves or terminate at a boundary surface. For example, if you look at the smoke smoke rings in case of a smoke ring the vertex lines they form closed curves on the other hand in case of whirlpool the vertex lines they terminate at a boundary in the fluid. If you look at the hurricane another example is that in case of hurricane 
the eye of hurricane we know that it is always makes a circular motion. In the in that case also only the hurricane dissipate only when it hits from the sea when it approaches towards the land and uh, approaches certain boundary. So, then it dissipate the energy dissip get dissipated and then we do not see any the vortex uh, they lose their identity the strength they lose their strength. With this understanding of to vertex lines and vertex tubes now we will go to we will talk a little about streamlines and path lines. So, here what we have talked by now in this lecture we have already talked about the equation of continuity by now I will just summarize we have talked about equation of continuity. We have talked about equation of continuity, then we have talked about some of the characteristics motion that is irrotational flow, irrotational flow and then when the flow is irrotational and the fluid is incompressible we call this as a potential flow. I will just summarize all these things in this lecture and then we have talked about vortex lines, we have talked about the angular velocity or the fluid particle if q is the velocity vector then we have the we have the vortex vorticity vector and then we have from vorticity vector we have talked about the vortex tube and vortex lines. So, this is the this is all about in this lecture in the next lecture we will come to stream lines path lines and then we will talk about stream function try to connect the the stream function with the streamlines and then we will go to we have velocity potential in velocity potential we have the velocity potential and then we have the stream function we will try to relate both the stream function and the velocity potentials and afterwards we will go to work out few examples on streamlines and to find the flow direction of a particular fluid because that uh, that will be very interesting and uh, I will stop this lecture with this. Thank you.